People know who I am, my hard work, my degrees, my credentials. It all speaks for itself or do it. Stay tuned to today's episode where you will hear more about establishing your personal brand to fast track your career and move you to the next level. Welcome to the Elaborate Topics podcast, where we focus on lab-specific strategies for medical laboratory professionals. We're proud to be the healthcare detectives that work behind the scenes to get the results needed to influence medical decisions. Let's grow together and jump right into the lab. Hi, friends. This is Tywana Wilson, your leadership mentor and host for this episode of Elaborate Topics. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the show. Elaborate Topics is a weekly podcast that gives you practical tips, professional strategies, and leadership that you can use both inside and outside of the laboratory. Myself, along with my co-hosts, Lona Small and Stephanie Whitehead, bring you these strategies week after week with our amazing guests. So do us a favor, share this podcast out, subscribe to it at Direct Impact Broadcasting or on your favorite podcast platform. So let's jump into a topic that I feel is very relevant today and I think it will help you fast track your career. It's easy to underestimate the importance of personal branding and you may actually avoid participating in it altogether. The truth is branding occurs whether you participate in it or not. So whether you do something or not, you are still establishing a brand. The important thing is that you take control over and establish the brand that you desire. In today's world, it's important to take control of that brand, especially if you want to be taken seriously and you want others to take you seriously as well. So today I'm going to give you some tips for understanding the importance of personal branding and how to define your own personal brand for greater career success. So let's get started. Personal branding is identifying your assets, your characteristics, your strengths, and your skills as an individual. It is a mix of how you present yourself and how others actually see you. As we know, perception is reality. And so how you present yourself and how others see you makes up your personal brand. I recently had a meeting with my executive coach and one of the questions that I asked my executive coach is, what's one thing that I should know or be aware of? And my coach is a hospital executive that runs a 900 bed hospital. And one of the things that he mentioned is about the premise of having a personal brand. He said, it's not about just your credentials anymore. It's not about your degrees or certifications or your job title. It really is about your brand and organizations are becoming more and more concerned about the brand of the people that they hire. They really want to make sure that it's a good fit. And when I think back over people that I have hired, I am too looking at their brand and are they able to communicate that clearly? What is it that you bring to the table outside of your degree, outside of your certification? And as laboratorians and lab professionals, I know you're probably thinking like, well, does, what does that really have to do with me getting my next laboratory job? And honestly, it has everything to do with you getting your next laboratory job because organizations are not going to just be asking about your degree, about your resume, about your CV. They want to know if you're going to be a good fit. And sometimes you don't have a lot of time to be able to communicate the things that you're able to bring to the table. So 
That's why it's important to be able to know what your brand is, know what you stand for, so that you're able to communicate those things even when you only have a few minutes to be able to do so. So let's talk about what your personal brand helps you to do. So your personal brand helps you to chart your own direction. Your brand will help you to establish your goals, your priorities, and even action plans. So even while taking care of daily obligations, you'll have a bigger picture in mind when you think about what your brand can help you to do, chart your direction of what's your ne next career opportunity? Where is it that you see yourself in a few years, in five years, in 10 years? And we've talked about this a few times on this show. So go back to some of the previous episodes that we had, especially the one where we talked about establishing your career roadmap. That'll help you with your personal brand as well. Another thing your personal brand helps you to do is it helps you to really prosper as an individual free agent or as an all-star. Your personal brand is your reputation. It's the way that others see you, quite frankly. So if you're like most people, you may have switched jobs a couple of times or even employers a couple of times in your career, maybe early on. And your brand, your personal brand is an asset that you take with you wherever you go. So it's not like you are stuck with it while you're with a certain employer, your brand is you. So whether you're with employer A for five or 10 years and go to another employer, you take your personal brand with you. It is your reputation. And another thing I wanna say about your personal brand and how it helps you, but it helps you to serve others. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean? How does my personal brand helps me to serve others? Well, sometimes when people think about branding, they think about self-promotion and they think about that from a vain perspective or self-absorbed perspective. But really, in reality, your personal brand shows the positive impact that you have on other people and the world around you. So your brand is everything, right? It is the way to get from A to B. It is the way to fast track your career. So before we get into talking about defining your personal brand, let me tell you a quick story about a student that I once had in one of my programs. And to protect her privacy, in this story, we will call her, say, Ashley. She was preparing for an internal job promotion interview and she was given an assignment to describe her strengths and what she could bring to this role that she was interviewing for, an internal role within her company. This was the first time she had to do an activity like this where she had to look at herself and, and be able to present herself in kind of a written way. And so it gave her a little bit of anxiety the problem was every time she thought of a strength, she thought again and decided, well, that really isn't a strength. It, you know, ah, that's not, that's not a strength. So nothing she considered a strength was related to the job description. So she was really having a hard time with this assignment. She then began to think of all the traits that successful people in similar roles at the job had that she actually lacked. So by the end of the assignment, she was convinced that she really didn't have any strengths that would make her a prime candidate for this role. And she really wanted this opportunity. She had been working for the organization for like three years and she really was interested in this promotion opportunity. Unfortunately, that's when she hit rock bottom and she decided to lie on her answers by choosing strengths that mimic those of her colleagues versus the ones that she actually possessed that she didn't feel like were quite good enough. It finally came down to time for a decision and 
Ashley wasn't selected for the job. She was crushed. She was hurt. She was like, what do you mean I'm not selected for the job? I have all the strengths that the other people that, that are in this role that they have. So when she asked for feedback as to why she wasn't selected, the higher manager told her that they were looking for a candidate that actually had different strengths than what they already had on their team. And honestly, they was a little bit disappointed because they thought that she was going to offer something different. At least that was their perception of her that she would be able to offer something different. So when Ashley shared this story with me, she said that was the moment that really changed everything for her in that she was going and looking for strengths that, you know, wasn't even needed. She really needed to stay true to her own personal brand and what seemed that was not important to her could have been, and it sounds like it was exactly what was needed for the opportunity. So the moral of the story is one, don't lie about your strengths. Either they're your strengths or they're not. But two, your personal brand really is what makes you unique. And that is your superpower. And so I told you that story because I think it's important for you to know that your strengths your skills, your abilities, your characteristics, all of those things make up your personal brand. And those things are important. That, that's why people want you a part of their team. That's why organizations choose you among all the other candidates that have a bachelor's degree, a certification, the same number of years of experience. That's why they choose you instead of choosing the other people that have similar credentials or qualities. So here's where the practical part of this podcast come into play is giving you some tips on actually defining your own personal brand. And these tips will help you create an outstanding personal brand for yourself. I was recently reading this book by Jeff Henderson, and he asked two very good questions in this in that book. And it's called Know What You're For. And I feel like it's relevant in regards to personal branding. But the two questions that he asks in that book, the first question is, what do you want to be known for? So I think that helps when you're thinking about your brand. What is it that you want to be known for? And is that congruent with what you're putting out there? Because sometimes what you want to be known for and his second question is, what are you known for? Doesn't always match. So I think keeping those two questions in the back of your head too is going to be helpful as I start talking about some of these tips that you can use. So the first one is take an inventory. So take a good look at yourself, write out your strengths and your weaknesses. Also, identify those things that are your passions. Think about what you're good at and what you like to do. That's a great place to start for your personal brand is taking an inventory of yourself. And it's important to do that before you need to try and sell yourself for a career opportunity, promotion, new job or scholarship or something like that. So when you think about your your strengths, are you great with communicating with a diverse group of people? Meaning that, especially in today's workplace where there are multiple generations working side by side on the bench with each other in the laboratory, are you good at being able to communicate with that the baby boomers, as well as being able to communicate with the Gen Xers or, or Gen Zers. So that's a skill being able to not just communicate, but connecting with people at all levels, 
is a skill and a strength. And is that something that you have? That's something that you need to take into your inventory and write that down. When you think about some of your passions, are you a person that likes to get everybody together, organize events? As lab professionals, we love to eat, right? And so are you the person that likes to, at least when times were different and we could have potlucks or, you know, have events? Again, this is when times were a little bit different and this was before we had a pandemic. But are you that person that likes to get people together and over an event? That's a, a strength right there because everybody doesn't have that that know-how. Everybody doesn't have that where they're able to bring a group of people together. So thinking about your inventory. The second thing is you want to think about ways you can distinguish yourself from your colleagues. So there are plenty of talented and dependable people in every field. And we talk about all the that all the time when you are looking to get on a committee or get a promotion or get a new job or get a scholarship. What is the thing that separates you from your colleagues? Being able to point out those things that, that really makes you unique. So think about that too when you're thinking about your inventory. Think about those things that distinguish you from your colleagues of making you stand out as the candidate of choice. And maybe it's some of the experiences that you had. I'm always interested and intrigued by some of my friends who've been able to live all over the world. Maybe they came from a military family and they've been able to live abroad and live in different cities, large cities, small cities. And I just think it's interesting to be able to adapt and be around different cultures. And so that's something that's unique because everybody hasn't had the opportunity to be able to travel the world and be immersed in different cultures. So some of the things that you may not feel is a distinguishing point might really be your competitive advantage. Are you somebody that's able to speak fluently in multiple languages? That's definitely a competitive advantage, especially if you are in a city that has a huge population of bilingual people that are able to and routinely speak multiple languages. When you think about your personal brand, are you able to talk about your benefits or do you just talk about I have a degree, I went to this school, those kind of things. So you have to be able to let your employer or your target audience, if you're doing any kind of speaking, know what you can do for them. So explain what they would get when they bring you as a member of their team. I always end interviews when I ask candidates, if we hire you, what or who are we getting? So if all things are equal, if the other candidates have the same education that you have, years of experience that you have, and on paper, everything looks pretty similar. Why you over them? And you would be surprised that a lot of people stumble. A lot of people stumble on that. And if they do be able to give answers is pretty much I'm a hard worker and I'm dependable. So this is a time to really tune in to your personal brand, because when you're asked questions like that, why you with your competitive advantage, what makes you different, then you're able to give some of those benefits. What are the benefits of hiring you for that organization, for that team, for that employer? So if they hire you, what are you able to bring? Maybe it's you have been able to work in a 
high volume laboratory and you're able to bring that efficiency because you have worked in a place that had multiple instruments that you were able to be familiar with. Maybe the place had automation and you're going to a place that maybe it doesn't have automation. So some of your strengths that you learn from working in the higher volume place, maybe it would be an advantage to the new location. Maybe you are able to think of some of those efficiencies that they are able to offer or benefit from. Understanding the organization's pain points will help you with your benefits that you will offer. Organizations want to know that you're able to feel the need of what they are missing, of their pain. So what can you do to help minimize the pain that they are feeling? Be able to summarize your mission or who you are in really 15 seconds or less. People's attention span is so limited these days that you're not going to have a lot of time to be able to go from when you were a young girl in elementary school to where you are today because people are they're just going to check out. <laughs> and so you need to be able to summarize your mission and be able to capture people's attention very quickly. Let them know who you are or what you do in like 15 words or less. Can you summarize that in 15 words or less? And that's part of your brand. And you can tell if you're on the right track with that when people ask you for more details, like tell me more. So if they're giving you that look and you gave them just enough to hook them in and they like, oh, tell me more about that. I'm interested in that. Then, you know, you're on the right track. But if they look like they are ready to fall asleep, then you need a different pitch because there's something about it. Either it's too long or it's not interesting or it's not a brand pitch that makes you unique. So being able to have that quick summary, that 15 words or, or less of who you are or what you do. And remember, you're looking for those clues. You're looking for those head nods of interest and not that we got 30 minutes and we've not even asked good questions to be able to see if you're going to be a fit or not. Ask for feedback. So this goes back to those two questions that Jeff Henderson has in his book. What do you want to be known for? What are you actually known for? So this fifth tip is ask for feedback. You can survey your family, your friends, colleagues, customers, if you have them, of what they think of you and your abilities because that's going to be important for you if you are not sure what it is ask for feedback and see what other people think i actually did this not too long ago and i just put out a post on social media when people think of me and think of my brand what do they think and i know what i think my brand is but i wanted to see if it was congruent with what other people think if there was synergy there or is there something that i'm putting out there or doing that's not consistent with what i want my brand to be so you can do something similar or you could just ask people you work with like you know what are some of my strengths what do you think my strengths are or, you know, what do you think of my abilities? What do I do well? What do I do well on this team? Or why do you really like working with me? You can start there and kind of build upon that, especially if you're not really sure. So that that way that you can get a jump start. Feedback is a gift. So you definitely want to make sure that you ask uh, those that are in your circle so that you can understand 
what your strengths are, what your abilities are. And when you do do that, ask your colleagues, make sure that you uh, thank them and show your appreciation so that they'll keep sharing with you. Because again, feedback is a gift. And so it just helps you continue to get better and better and better. And then the last kind of tip that I'll give you for defining your personal brand is making sure that you stay updated. So review your personal mission and vision statements and make new action plans so you're always getting closer to your goals and making sure that your brand is consistent with where it is that you really want to be. And the only way that you'll know is that you revisit. So some people do it every six months. Some people do it once a year. And depending on when you're listening to this podcast, it is the end near the nearing the end of 2021. And so people are getting ready for their 2022. And now is a perfect time to review your personal brand and make updates for your where your goals are and see if your brand is in alignment with where you want to go. So those are some simple tips that you can use to define your brand. I know you're probably thinking, okay, so should I have a separate professional brand and a separate personal brand? Honestly, they really kind of overlap. And so there are aspects of your professional life that goes into your personal life and vice versa. And so that's up to you if you want to try to keep them separate. But honestly, I think your brand is your brand. And whether you are in your professional space or personal space, it really does start to overlap. So I can only tell you what I do, but I don't try and separate the two. My personal brand is who I am at my core. It's what I care about from a mission standpoint and a vision statement for my life. And and it really overlaps and it's not very different. And so you can think about that if if that's something that you feel like your personal and professional brand uh, needs to be separate. But the caveat to that would be as as people kind of look to you and and want to understand your your brand it could throw them off if it's so different like well professionally i see her as this but in her personal life she's she's doing this and she's doing that and it, it doesn't match and so that could give you some issues there i'll give you a couple marketing tips so now that you have defined your brand you're probably thinking well how do i market myself do Do I do it on social media? Do I like, how do I do it? Well, once you discover your brand, define your brand, you do need to lean into that so that you are talking it, living it often. And so that it's not something that every now and again, when you come to an interview that you need to start uh, speaking into your brand this is something that you need to live, breathe, sleep, eat. (laughs) Because again, as we talked about earlier, whether you want to or not, your brand is being determined whether you do anything with it or not. So you might as well own it. And if you don't, then your brand will be determined for you. So a couple of strategies that you can use to get your personal brand out there is you want to increase your visibility. And so one of the things you can do to increase your visibility is you can start posting on your social media, posting with messages that are relevant to your brand. I'm all about leadership and building the next generation of leaders and career advancement. So most times I'm posting something in that space. And it doesn't matter if you're on my LinkedIn, on my professional account, or if you're on my personal Facebook page, it's really all similar. And you can post 
on if you have a website you can post on your website or you can blog and people are doing some really cool things in the laboratory with blogging and video blogging and youtube and that's all a way to expand your visibility and your personal brand there are several magazines out the clinical lab manager is one that's always looking for laboratory professionals to write articles in there's other article other magazines that you can write articles in to establish your brand so i've written articles for the clinical lab manager of I'm also a contributing writer for a lifestyle magazine and I'm talking about leadership. And so those are ways that you can increase your visibility of being present, giving presentations, writing articles. Anytime there's opportunities to present, then submit, throw your name in the hat to be able to present on the topic. Doesn't mean you're always going to be selected and that's okay, but there are going to be times that you will be selected or opportunity where you can present your poster or attend one of the conferences and uh, do a presentation or round table or something like that. So that all helps with defining your brand and giving visibility to your brand. And this last thing I'll leave you with in regards to marketing, because this could be a whole episode by itself. And we might put this on the calendar for 2022, talking about marketing yourself. But put yourself together a dream team. It is very difficult to go the road alone. So cultivate your network. And we've talked about networking in a couple of podcasts. So go back to where we talked about uh, growing your network and building your network to some of our previous episodes. But help others to market their brand and they're more than likely to do the same for you. So teaming up with people with complementary traits, characteristics would be great. And that's really how you're able to give some continued exposure to your brand. And when people think about opportunities, they start to think about you. So I know I've been able to establish some awesome relationships, awesome laboratory relationships with other professionals near and far. Is doing a lot of amazing things and just being able to cultivate my network with them and, and them vice versa. We've been able to grow each other's brand. We've been able to leverage each other's talents and skills. So put together your dream team and cultivate your network because you never know. That might be exactly what you need to fast track your career and help move your personal brand to a higher visibility, especially if your goal is to present at the next conference, at the next uh, annual meeting or at the next big event for our laboratory profession. Or maybe it's to move up to a manager role or a director role. Establishing your personal brand and having your dream team will come in handy for you. So to wrap up today's episode, your personal brand is very important. That is the way people take you seriously. And that is the way if you want to be taken seriously is to establish your personal brand. Identify your assets, your characteristics, your strengths, your skills. These are all things that make up your personal brand. We talked about the defining your personal brand and tips for you to be able to create an outstanding personal brand, which includes taking an inventory, distinguishing yourself from your colleagues, being able to pinpoint your unique features, 
talk about benefits and what you bring to the table, not just your credentials or your degrees, but talk about the benefits and how you're able to solve the, the problem or speak to the pain that the organization might be having. Be able to summarize your mission, your brand in 15 seconds or less and more so in 15 words or less. And you can tell if you're on the right track. If people want to know more, they say those magic words, tell me more. Ask for feedback. If you are unsure where to start, start with these two questions. What do you want to be known for? And what are you known for? So ask your friends, what do they know you for? What are your abilities? What are your skills? What, are, what do you bring to the table? And make sure you stay up to date and revisit your brand often to make sure it's on track with what you want it to be. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Elaborate Topics. Make sure you share this podcast out with another laboratory professional or a friend of the laboratory who could benefit from hearing this information. We talk about all things leadership. We talk about those technical strategies because in order to be a good laboratorian, you have to be a well-rounded laboratorian, especially in today's society. If you got anything out of this podcast, do us a favor and let me know what did you get out of the podcast? You can actually submit a video response and I will include the link in our show notes. And you never know, we just might feature you on our Direct Impact social media. So make sure you go on and give us a, a review of what you learned or what tips you got from this podcast. Please share it out. Tune in week after week. If there are particular topics that you would like to hear, drop us a note. Join us over on LinkedIn in our Elaborate Topics group or follow all of us on social media. My co-host, Lona Small and Stephanie Whitehead. And until next time, my friends, have an amazing day. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaborate Topics, where your hosts discussed relevant strategies for laboratory professionals. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to us on directimpactbroadcasting.com. Stay tuned for another episode with information you can use to excel in your laboratory career.